Who would you save, me or a chimp? <laughs> um, I, I, would, I, would, I would take it on a case by case basis <laughs> and, and uh, at, at the moment <laughs> at the moment you might be coming in a second <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well you know, I mean the, the chimp is obviously going to do much less harm in environmental terms and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I can deal with that. <laughs> um, yeah, plastics and t-shirts, that kind of thing. Yes, there, there are issues within veganism. And it is true that there are vegan products which involve exploitation of humans and other, other animals. But usually, usually, most animal rights people that I've ever met are also great supporters of human rights. And they're also environmentalists and everything else. And so consequently, the ironic answer to either dealing with that issue of sweatshops and that kind of stuff, and also the problems which are embedded within veganism, like harvesting, the ironic answer, if you like, is that we need more vegans. So we need a population where vegans have got socio-political and economic power, which means then that we can demand that those structural issues are dealt with. In the meantime, what vegans tend to do is they go to ethical, or at least more ethical, uh, suppliers. So they'll go, for example, to vegetarian shoes. Um, so they'll pay over the odds for, for shoes that they can guarantee as being vegan. They'll go for uh, fair trade kind of products, even though there are issues to that. So I think, I think that you'll probably find in a general demographics of, of, of vegans, that they were, they're very careful about what they consume on human rights levels as well as animal rights. So I think that's just across the board on, on that one. Um, so uh, humans versus animals, we're obviously work, trying to work at the situation where we don't have that kind of dichotomy and that kind of uh, dualism, if, if, if you like. Um, if if we came into, into, into a clash with other animals, like people would give an example of something like, you know, rogue elephants. The first thing that we would do as animal rights people is recognize them as other rights bearers. Okay, and so consequently we're then trying to figure out a dispute amongst rights bearers. And that would then change the moral picture. In the same way as when we're dealing with disputes and clashes within the human rights field, we recognize that these clashes and disputes are taking place amongst rights holders. That, that, would, that would change the thing completely. If, um, and also, just, just on, that, on that kind of crude issue of that, if, if another animal attacked you and you couldn't stop her attacking you, then within the animal rights theory, you would have the right to self-defense. In the same way, as if anybody of you, any of you now rushed me and attacked me, which is quite possible, uh, <laughs> after, anyway. after today, and, um, and, but, and you wouldn't stop, then I've also got a right to self-defense. And legally, I would actually have the right to, to um, use le lethal force, if necessary. Although you, you, you would end up having to deal with that through courts. Yeah. Uh, finally, can we use that microphone up here? Sure, that one, seems, the, um, that one seems to be bad. Do you think you can hold it? I, I need to go to the toilet. Well, okay. You, you, you know, know how to do it. I hope people do it now so I can hold it. Actually, I think that's the Okay, well, let's go to the more questions then. Uh, I'd like to start off by saying thank you to both Harry and Roger. It's great to see a debate like this informed debate where both sides are respecting each other. Uh, it doesn't always happen. Um, so thank you. Um, I'd like to go back to the first premise that you brought up, uh, Harry, which was you don't know the animals, you don't really care about the animals, which makes it ethically okay or ethically, ethically correct to then eat them. And then... Uh, and we're talking about in where it's not necessary, right? So, as you have many vegans here who'll say, <laughs> we can live perfectly healthy without doing so. So, then later in your discussion, 
you mentioned that you would like to see animals suffer as little as possible. Which, going back to that first argument, if you're saying, well, you don't really care and that makes it okay, then why do you care? But you also care that they do suffer. Now, in the whole meat manufacturing process, they're suffering and you pay for that suffering. I find a contradiction in the two points. Will I take this immediately? No, no, we take a few more questions. How many people are there? Four? Five. Five. Okay, um, take five and try and keep them reasonably succinct. Okay, um, without uh, wanting to um, impugn anyone's personal hygiene, what would you do if you became infested with lice or fleas? Or if your house became, say, infested with bed bugs or cockroaches? And so on that point, is there a is there a level of complexity of the brain that that's where a brain is just not complex enough to be regarded as as being able to be a rights holder? And at what point do you run into clashes with the pro choice movement on abortion? Might <laughs> <laughs> take the answer. There's a lot there. You take the answers to those. Okay, so uh, that was to do with the, uh, uh, sorry, what was your name? Uh, David. David, uh, David felt there was a contradiction between uh, two points of mind. Um, to be honest, David, I don't really see the contradiction. Uh, the second one was more an expansion on the first. I don't really care about any animals because I don't know them. But um, likewise, there's lots of people I don't know who I would rather didn't suffer. Um, so not knowing them and, and not being too interested in them isn't dependent on them suffering or, or me caring whether they suffer or not. Um, does that answer? Okay, uh, maybe if I could just explain. Yeah. Um, I guess the point that I'm making is that you purchasing the meat and then eating, consuming the meat is causing the suffering. And you're saying then later that you would like to see as little suffering as possible. Well, it's considering it's not necessary to eat them in the first place, as little suffering as possible would be to not purchase the meat. Um, yeah, I think I made that point, saying that there is sort of a hard table for uh, how little suffering you can, you can give an animal when you're eating it and having it killed. Um, though, to be perfectly honest, um, I would be quite interested to kill an animal, purely because I think it's something that, as someone who is eating animals and things like that, I should be willing to do. Um, I do sort of half subscribe to the idea that humans as a species are, in, in a sense, almost pack apex predators in the same way that in a pack of wolves there will always be more wolves that make the kill than others and they all eat it. In the same sense, I don't feel that um, I must kill an animal because I eat meat, but it's something that I feel I would be happy to do and would actually quite like to do at some point. Um, <laughs> I don't want them to suffer needlessly or beyond what is but, but, what is required. But we agree for, that the statement that it's not necessary to begin with. I disagree. For me, I, I feel it's not necessary to eat meat, but it's a choice I make, and it's necessary for the lifestyle I lead. Point of information. Point of information. Um, point, point of information. Um, uh, I've done work experience in a large uh, abattoir, um, and I've also worked um, ag agriculturally. So, um, the worst suffering I've noticed um, in the abattoir would be where the animals, uh, before they go, uh, get taken away individually, um, are kind of packed into quite a cramped... Uh, uh, the worst suffering that the animal might experience will be uh, be pushed into quite a cramped space whilst, waited, whilst, while it's waiting for someone to come and take it um, and to stun it, which is the kind of the equivalent of your GP saying, you're only going to feel a little pinch, and that's it. Um, the same kind of cramped conditions would be where we would take, if say if the weather was uh, changing, we would need to transport um, a group of sheep, say from one field to another, 